with me, Rich Glass, the head basketball coach at the University of North Dakota. Good to see you, Rich. Good to be here. Now, a little history here. When I was over at Morehead State throwing spirals, this guy next to me was roaming the sidelines in Morris, Minnesota for the Cougars. That's right. And your coaching career is taking you to Grand Forks, as everybody in our viewing audience knows. But you know a lot of these kids from Morris, Minnesota, they had to be this yeah, high when were. you were coaching. Yeah, a lot of little kids. You know, it's kind of neat to come back here and see the Schmidt dolls, the Tates, and the Logies. And, uh, Gotta know moms yeah, and dads. It makes, me, it makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them over in the stands when we came in. They were uh, over visiting, so it was kind of fun to see all the folks again. So kind of a homecoming for you. Yep. Rich, you had a nice finish uh, with your team. Uh, sure did. Facing the adversity that you had. Uh, I would, in fact, I would go so far as to say that that tournament in Fargo, the NCC postseason, had to be somewhat of a highlight for you as a coach, yeah. seeing your team rally the way they did and finish strong. It really was. I think if you judge success uh, by a team is reaching their potential and, and playing to that level, then we certainly were a very successful basketball team. We kept improving, getting better as the season went along. And when it came to that tournament, uh, we went in and got the job done and uh, made it to the NCAA tournament for a fifth straight year and won two out of three games there. So our guys, I'm very proud of them. Uh, again, if you count for success by reaching potential, our guys did it. And unfortunately, a lot of teams and a lot of people don't reach their potential in this society. And uh, so it was a very rewarding year. I had a great time. you got to be excited that Travis Tuttle has recovered, and he'll be back. I understand he's already hitting threes for you. Well, he's, he's hitting some threes, but he's not running uh, very quickly at this point. They've only got him jogging. He's not going full speed. He hasn't been able to do any scrimmaging at all. And uh, we're holding our breath. He, he, he's a young man that uh, would be a shame if he can't come back healthy because he's a great talent, but he puts so much effort into the game. He works hard. Rich, are you glad that the NCC postseason tournament's now history? Well, we kind of had some charge yeah, there. you did. You, know? you won it three straight we, times. We won 13 games and lost two during that stretch. I think I was a little crazy maybe getting rid of that tournament. But the reality of it is... Uh, I think that you go through the 18 games of the schedule, That's those are the teams that really deserve to be in the NCAA tournament. And now with it expanding as it did to six teams in the region and turning around and having to play Tuesday, that's a difficult thing to do. And I thought it was tough for our guys. I thought coming back Tuesday, uh, particularly that first half, we were we were a flat basketball team. How are the Coyotes going to do in the Elite Eight? Well, they're going to have to shoot were there it a year well. ago. Yeah, they're going to have to shoot the ball very well uh, because if they don't, uh, they're going to have a hard time competing because Jones will then affect them uh, with his losses. Defensively, they're not as strong inside. And I know Southern Indiana's got a, a player inside that can go to the rack pretty well and score, and that's a problem for them. I know Stan had a big night against them. Uh, Chris Gardner was uh, rolling along well until he picked up a couple fouls, and then he came back and he was rolling. But we just had that one stretch where we went eight possessions without scoring and lights out. Rich, good luck to you. Thanks for joining us at courtside. I have Thank to you. tell our viewers and listeners, I'm not an in-depth interviewer. I can't <laughs> ask you about any of these high school players That's right. against That's NCAA right. yeah, rules. Yeah, but we can't be talking recruit. No, you're here as a fan and uh, a guy who knows the Morris program well from years back coaching yeah. with the Cougars. Thanks for joining us and best of luck to you. Thank you for having me. This was the story in game one. Kevin Logie getting the job done at both ends of the floor and throwing in 28 points. The Morris Tigers go to 26-0. And if he wasn't before, he is now a big prospect. Kevin Logie and the Tigers move on, warming up the Cardinals and the Tigers from Rotsay. And we'll be back. Rossay joining us live now. Lynn Peterson, the head coach of Rossay. Who are you pulling for, Peterson or Peterson? We got one on each side. Well, we got two counting me, so I'm going to go with the numbers. Okay. Two against one. What do you know about Rossay? What do you think about that ball? Well, they're very talented. There's no doubt about it. I've seen them play a couple times before the tournament here. And, uh, of course, Amundsen inside. they got good size, and, uh, and they're physical. I mean, they're well-built well, well -built kids. Uh, they got kids that can shoot the ball from the outside, and they got penetrators. I mean, they're pretty good. They're pretty solid all around basketball team and for a school that size they got depth scrappy aren't they they sure are they won't quit and they keep coming at you you got to have home court advantage here being here so many times your kids must feel comfortable with this surrounding well i would be surprised i don't know i mean i don't know how well we'll play or won't play but i don't think uh i don't think our kids are going to be in awe coming here i think that's kind of what we've been waiting for because uh we didn't play particularly 
Hendricks is standing in there. You want to have momentum coming into this tournament. You feel like the Cardinals have it? Well, again, uh, kind of contradictory what I said. We, we didn't play real well in the subsection, but I think sometimes, you know, last year we had to, we had to really battle to get out of the subsection. This year there were some good basketball teams in our subsection, but I think our talent was superior, and that's probably what carried us. And I think this is what they've been waiting for. So, yeah, I think we got some momentum. Describe the Cardinal attack for us. You got Peterson and Jaeger on the outside with some fantastic numbers. Are you a perimeter team? Can you dump it inside or are you both? Well, we like to take what a team gives us. Uh, you know, Blaine and Trevor are averaging about 17 a game each, but Paul Gordon inside is averaging 14 as well. So we think we got some balance there inside, outside. Uh, Cy Best under other guard is averaging 10. And Eric Kelly is averaging eight, but I think that he's a kid that could average more, but he's a freshman, uh, so he just doesn't take as many shots. He's shooting the best percentage of anybody, but he won't shoot the ball. That's the older guy do the shooting. Uh, we're going to see a Peterson-Peterson matchup on the floor? I think it depends on who's on the floor. Uh, we won't see one from our perspective to start with. Now, uh, as the game progresses, it depends on who they have in the ball game, but uh, if it comes along, it comes along, I guess. You just go out play the game. Good luck today. All right, thanks, Dan. Lynn Peterson, head coach of the Cardinals, and we'll be back with Randy Balkin as our in-between game coverage continues. Okay, Tigers defeating Eagle Valley by a score of 69-42. Game two set to start in about eight minutes. It features Ross Sane. Probably the Cinderella story in this tournament. Do you feel that way, Coach? Not really. I think that we, we came a long ways, you know, for being a ball club that nobody gave a chance, I guess, earlier in the season. But we're here to play basketball tonight. I hope it does. we do well. Bottom line, you're playing your best basketball when you should be playing your best basketball. I think we are. Uh, we made a couple changes in the latter part of the season in our starting lineup, and uh, we've really done well since making those changes. Bottom line for us, you got to get Ben Amundsen involved early. I believe so, and I think we also got to slow the game down. We can't run and gun with these guys. Uh, I told the kids earlier that get in a half-court offensive game and give Ben the ball, and hopefully we get some fouls on them and stop them from running. This is almost like a home game for Staples. They've been here so many times, 13 now over the past 15 years. How do you counteract that? Because it has been a while since you guys have been here. Well, we were here three times in the last two weeks. I feel real good about that. I don't think that these kids remember the 13 years that Staples have been here, and they remember tonight, and that's what we're here for. Where do you begin with Staples offensively? They've got some kids with some good numbers. Right. I think the two keys tonight is we have to stop Trevor Peterson from hitting the threes and beat Mr. Blaine Yeager. I think they're the, they're the real keys to their ball club. Can you get them? I sure hope so. We're going to give her all we got. Randy, good luck. Thank you very much. Randy Balkan, head coach of Ross Bay. Back with more after this.
good on the season. From three-point land, Staples is more of a baseline to baseline team, Denny. They don't not going to beat you with the three very often. I mean, Lynn Peterson's team is they don't miss very many opportunities to get the ball down the floor. No, that's that's for sure. They're going to run the ball down the floor, but they do shoot more threes this year than they have for quite a while, I think, because they do not have the big kid inside. They lost their 6'6 kid from last year, and uh, they're not quite as big inside. All right, anything to this? Roth say this is as far as they've ever been. Staples, 13 out of the last 15 years out of their district or subsection, they've showed up at the Cobber Fieldhouse. Six since 1981. And the numbers just tell the story. Lynn Peterson has got over 300 wins. What's that tell Ross Say coming into tonight's game? Lynn Peterson has done an outstanding job, there's no doubt, and Ross Say knows they're going against a perennial champ. But I would say this, usually when Staples takes the floor, they got a center that's a dominating center. They we don't have that. We go back to Salty, we go back to Nelson, we go back, you can keep going back to, to uh, Walhall and those boys, and they always had the big people. Here's and how they got here. Ross Say over Eulen Hitterdahl. In our coverage last week, a close five-point game, and Staples did the job on Ferndale, 72-55. You know, you mentioned the kinds of players that Lynn Peterson has had over the years, and there's a host of them. The Beachy Brothers, Walthall, Salvi, Nelson. Who do you like on this team? Well, Jager is a great basketball player. Uh, Lynn Boy is a, is a great basketball player. The Gordon kid has, has just played for years for him. He can do a lot of things. Uh, I, I'm sure Lynn wishes he was about four inches taller, but he, he has to play the big man role. They got a freshman kid by the name of Kelly that can drill him from outside. So they're an outside shooting. They're an outside shooting team, basically. But they're going to run the floor, and uh, they're going to have they're going to have uh, fun playing the game. Cardinals at 21 and four. The Tigers at 19 and six. Let's go to the PA announcer, Sean Lockwood, for the starting Welcome, lineup. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Concordia Memorial Fieldhouse and Auditorium, and to the Section 6A semifinal. Tonight's game features the Subsection 3A champions, the Rusty.
lines are up in the Cabra Fieldhouse, supporting the two big guys inside for the Tigers. Big Ben and Young Matt, they've got to show up against this team, the Cardinals, because Staples is such a hot shooting team and a quick team. Interesting move, Ed. Lynn Balkin is starting a freshman Nelson instead of Ben Amundsen. Maybe he wants that power front line to go to work on the smaller Staples Cardinals. Somebody said he's superstitious. They haven't been beaten since the freshman has started. Look out. <laughs> Don't you love that stuff as a coach? Oh, sure. <laughs> Anything that works. It comes off to the Tigers. Carlsrud, who won the ball game the other night, Parazze, will open up against the man-to-man. -man. This is Moon, up top to the young kid, the freshman, Nelson. And Lee Peterson, back to Carlsrud. This will be a heck of a matchup, these two kids. Peterson against Carlsrud tonight. Moon. Ben is yet to touch it. Oh! For three, Amundsen, in and out. But this gives Rossay a very interesting dimension in that Matt Amundsen off the bench looks awfully good. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. They've got a good-sized front line, and that's going to be the, the question here. Staples shoots the ball so well. 50% from the field for the season. Peterson scores the first bucket, and they'll open up with zone pressure. Something that Rossi had a little bit of problem with the other night, and there's your first turnover. Now they got to get the ball to the right people. That time, uh, Lee Peterson got it a little too late. He just couldn't take it across. Jaeger will put it in play. He just came to us here at courtside in front of the broadcast table and looked at me and said, we're back, baby, we're back. <laughs> well, I don't know if you call that confidence or what you call it. Nice deal. Well, whatever it is, he's having fun. Yeah. This is Peterson. And Jaeger picks up the first foul.
to the game. Logged a lot of time the other night in the subsection tournament. Handles the ball pretty well. Peterson up top to Moan. Amundsen is on the bench right now. But check that out, Thomason. And he can't make it fall. Oh, did Ben show us something there? That ball was beat around before he could get his hands on it. Now watch how quick he takes that ball to the hole. That's a good move. It just rolls off. Cardinals lead it 4-1. to one. Amundsen, who had a great championship game the other night. Now, if there is one downfall, and that is the Tigers are not a great free-throw shooting team. No, they certainly are.
to run at him and stays with him throughout. That's a tough call for Lynn Peterson. He'll probably bring him back in then if they take a run at him. Carl Cruz keeping Rossi within striking distance. 3.15 remaining first quarter. Peterson. We've seen him in this tournament before as there are Rossi's on a 6-2 run. Look at this kid go to work.
doesn't get it, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. A more than respectable showing by the Ross Bay Tigers. They lead it on a 12-3 run to finish the quarter, and we'll be back. The three run. Ben Amundsen comes out and gathers a very damaging foul to the chemistry of what Ross has got going right now. Wow, did he, because he was just dominating the game in the last couple minutes. We've got Staples 6 for 10 from the field and 3 for 3 from the free throw line, so they, they haven't missed. Peterson comes off with a turnover as they could not get it to Kelly Nelson. Peterson! Gordon looking for the putback. Harassed by the youngster, and Matt Amundsen comes away with it. Now, as we go to the second quarter, Rotze leading by one. It'll be interesting to see how they change with Ben on the bench with three fouls, and that's how they're going to change. They're going to go to the younger one. So big Boy, guys, it's great when they come two in a package, isn't it? They, <laughs> the big guy rushed his shot, big Kelly Nelson, but then we had Matt Amundsen just following it up. And Eric Kelly hits his first basket, and that breaks a three-minute and 30-second scoring drought for the Staples Cardinals. Dana Mock, what was said in the huddle leading by one, Ross Say at that time? I was in the uh, Staples huddle, and uh, the concern was Lynn Peterson was his team's inability to get some rebounds. Ben Amundsen led the Tigers back in it, but they did it with offensive rebounds. Cy Beslin, no, still alive. Kelly, yes. Cardinals by one. Just a hustle bucket again by the freshman, Kelly. That's not taking care of the ball on the Tigers' end. No, it isn't. The defense is, uh, they've got the defense moving up a little more. Carlsruhe. Very similar. Look at Peterson catching the Tigers asleep. The young Kelly. Kelly Nelson off for the rebound. Referees, get out of the way. Let us play. Hey, We're going up and down. It's tournament time. Let them roll. Carlsrude got to tie his shoe. Balkan back to Carlsrude. Nelson can't save it. Eric Kelly. Now, yeah. are we going to make a profound statement here or an observation if we say that the Rossi Tigers, within the span of a week, look tournament tested? They look a lot better tonight. Well, definitely, but you know, uh, I think they're a lot like the Staples kids. They get in the gym a lot, and they play, play basketball, and uh, they're moving. They're really going after it. Bone, his first three of the night, and it comes off the court. Peterson directs it back. We're inside the five-and-a-half-minute mark, first half. Rotze by a point. Besslin back to Kelly. Eric Kelly with a drive. And it's going to be an offensive foul. Carlsrude had position. Good position. Hard to beat. And there's Carlsrude. It he was had, the elbow. Yeah, he gave him an elbow. Yeah. He pushed him off with his elbow. The young freshman's not, not worried about going in there, though, is he? No, no he's not. Little Lee Peterson. Scrappy little guard. Carl Cruz. Staples not known for giving the baseline and shaking and baking and Matt Amundsen. A garbage bucket inside, if you may. Same thing he did in the, in the subsection. Get on the board. Get on the board. When somebody misses, go get it. Doing a great job. Best one down low. Gorton on the fade. Yes.
the four minute mark, second quarter. Ty Beslin, wrong foot. You gotta like Lee Peterson though, he's gonna go in there no matter what. Yeah, he's gonna give her. Take a couple teeth out, he'll still show up. You bet. Randy Malkin's team. Now gathering. And we'll be back. Denny Anderson. What has it done to Staples to have Wayne Yeager on the bench with three fouls over the last six minutes? Oh, he's a tremendous player. And I'll tell you what he does so well. He's great on defense, great anticipator. He's a great offensive rebounder. Takes care of the ball. It's really hurt him. Carl Brood, offensive foul. Boy, they're calling those offensive fouls tonight, I'll tell you. But I'm impressed that Rossi is playing in here the way they are. And, uh, and Ben has been sitting on the bench. Yep, yep. This has been an interesting run by the Tigers. They lead it by one. Trevor Peterson, Cardinal. Up top, Cy Beslin. This has not been a night of three-point attempts. Rossi, one of two. Staples, zero for one.
success that can snowball on you when you're up against the Cardinals. Rotze has not scored in two and a half minutes, and it's been a 10 nothing run. Ben Amundsen playing with three fouls, and you would have to say that with 2.03 remaining in the first half, this is a very gutsy coaching move by Randy Balkan. And I don't think he felt they could get down any further than they than they are. So he puts Ben back into it. They get him the ball. Now he's got a chance for two points. Now with six one half dozen the other, mission accomplished. You go inside. You draw the foul. You put him to the line. Do you take him out at the horn? Well, it's a chess game at this point. It, it really is. But I think if you heard Randy in there, he said to Ben, Ben, don't get any fouls. If you do, see you, Jack. I don't know if he calls him Jack yeah, or what the deal is. Over. He's <laughs> over, yeah. So, uh, I think Randy was, I think, I think Big Ben understands, and of course he could get a foul anyway. Now, Lynn Peterson, forget the lead, get number four on the big guy. They'll work on it, I'm sure. Let's see what they do. Eric Kelly, best one to Peterson in the corner. Still a man-to-man. -man. Look at Matt Amundsen play the D. Big turnover. Here come the Tigers. Down by six. Turnovers for the Tigers and seven for the Cardinals. Lee Peterson. Carl Cruz. Ben Amundsen. Down low to Moon. This is Lee Peterson. Can't hang on to it. Besselin comes away with it.
Grizzlies by 11. Let's go to Dana Mock. He's with head coach Lynn Peterson. Lynn, summarize that half. Great start, great finish, right? Well, I guess so. I think the game got taken away from the kids, but uh, both sides. But that's the way it goes, you know. We're happy that we got a good start and a good finish, because that's why we're up, but we got to keep it going. They're tough.
first half. Great for Rouse from midway through the first to midway through the second. Well, we, we fell asleep on defense, I think, the last minute and a half, two minutes. We just got to step up the pace a little bit better and get our offense in motion. We're starting our offense 30 feet from the basket. We just have to do a better job offensively. The defense a little bit slack at about the last minute and a half. Get to work, Randy. Thank you. Staples can score points in a bunch. It has not been a night of three-point shooting, or attempts for that matter. Turnovers about the same, rebounds about the same. You heard the halftime report from Lynn Peterson, head coach of the Cardinals, what he wants to do against Ben Amundsen. He wants that fourth foul. Yes, he does, but he said, don't just try and get it on him. Move the ball. I think he was kidding us a little bit by saying throw it three, four, five times because they put it up before that, Ed. But, but the idea was he was trying to get the point across. Don't just try and get the foul on that. Play basketball, and then it, and it'll happen. Well, keep in mind, the Rotsay Tigers were down by 16 in our first night of tournament coverage, and they came back to win. Granted, they may be playing a little bit tougher competition right now, but certainly they are no stranger to this situation. 16 minutes of basketball left, down by 11, and their big guy with three personal fouls, but Matt Amundsen has played very well in that first half, and so did Kelly Nelson. Ed, excuse me, but the thing I see is that Staples has nine more shots up. That's a big stat. That's a big stat, and, and Rossi's got to get the ball up there. Well, Randy Balkin told Dana they're starting their offense 30 feet from the bucket. They can't do that. That's exactly right. Dana, your thoughts as we go to the second half? Well, it's going to be interesting to see which big gun gets his uh, fourth ball first. Lynn Peters at the halftime huddle says they really want to go after Ben Amundsen. You know, you get him in with four fouls, and that I think that just changes the Tiger look offensively and defensively completely. Gorton rejected by young Kelly Nelson. Here comes Lee Peterson. That's a freshman getting that block, Coach. Yes, it is. I'll tell you. <laughs> Moan in traffic to Ben. Amundsen starts the second half for... Isn't it easy to score tires. when you get a nice pass? It is. Really is. Rossi. Ooh, we got a foul away from the ball. I think it's on Kelly Nelson. I think you're right, Coach. It is. He's trying to keep the ball from Gorton, and, and well, he might because Gorton's tough when he gets it in there. Eric Kelly now looking for the inbound. Gets it to Gorton. Bestlin with the ball. Now low to Gort. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh. Kelly Nelson picks up another one. That's a pretty good matchup. Gorton, the veteran against the freshman. That's a tough matchup for them. They got Moon on Blaine Yeager. It is, and Gorton is so quick. You know, he's been an outside shooter, high post player for Lynn for the last couple years, and now he's playing low, growing a little bit, and he's a tough kid. Gorton. It's his first shot of the second half, and he's got 11 points. Carl through, near side to Peterson. Moan for three. No. Comes off to Bethlehem, and the Cardinals back to an 11-point advantage with a chance to pad it. Kelly, short. And it's off Moon's foot out of bounds. Job of blocking out Jaeger. Jaeger loves that offensive board, but Moan really put his body in there and blocked him out. Moan sits down, Kelly Nelson sits down, and Matt Amundsen and Chad Balkin come back in for Rotze. Court. Oh, again. The veteran for the Cardinals. Their biggest lead of the game. Tough inside player. Now sits at 13. Away from the ball, and Gorton picks up a foul. Trying to guard Ben Amundsen. It's a tough job. Carl through. Nice move to the hole, but can't convert. And Matt Amundsen. 
is foul. Boy, I like that young sophomore Matt Amundsen on the board, Dad. He really goes after the boards. He's done an excellent job in both tournaments. He's got a pretty innate ability to go to the iron. There's no doubt about that. Lee Peterson back to Carl Ruth. Vulcan couldn't save it. This is Jaeger running the break. Oh, look at that passing. Peterson couldn't handle it. And it's off Matt Amundsen. It'll stay with the Cardinals. Boy, that was that was some hustle. Carl Ruth ran it down, got the ball, and pushed it up, but they couldn't hang on to it. Another thing that Staples has got to take a look at is Trevor Peterson has got three fouls. Bethlehem. Rejected by Matt Amundsen, but it's a foul. Usually, Ed, when the kid has not released the ball yet and you got your hand on it, they're usually going to get you for a foul. Well, let's take a look at it and see okay. what happens. Up here. he goes and see he's got his hand on the ball when the kid when when Gordon still got the ball. If he'd have waited for him to release it, he'd have got he probably would have had a block on it. Gordon to the line and it's a tough call no matter what, but I'm just saying that usually that's how officials look at it. Rot save players showing their frustration, and this makes it a 15-point Staples lead, and Rot has got to go to work. 5.50 remaining, third quarter action. A fine second-half start for the Cardinals. Ben's having a hard time hanging on to the ball. Well, that wasn't a good pass. I don't know if too many people would have caught that. Maybe Shaq would have got it, but that's about all. Because that that's pass who they watch. Way too high. <laughs> way too high and hard. Trevor Peterson. Gorton going to work. And Amundsen traveled. Or check that. Gorton traveled. Staples is perfect from the line tonight. They're 8 of 8. Rotze 8 of 11. Zerbis to Peterson. Alone underneath is Balkan. His first two tonight. Quickly down the floor, Gorton. And the Tigers get back. This is Eric Kelly. Down low to Gorton. Gorton short arms it. Look who gets the rebound. The yeah, little guy. Peterson. He if wants you, a three. Look at him. If you go after the ball, you get the rebound. Zerbis needs help. Into the corner to Balkan. Back to Zerbis. Matt Amundsen. <laughs> Second half, Dana. It doesn't look like Rothsay's doing a very good job of handling the ball. No, and I think they can get it inside to Ben Amundsen a few times, but they're not getting the right look that they want offensively. He's the man that's got to get him back in his basketball game or else someone's going to have to start hitting from outside. Cy Beslin into the corner. Peterson left alone. And he'll take the long rebound. And again, Gorton on the putback. Over the back. And a foul. That's going to be on Jaeger, his fourth. Matt Amundsen with a bunch of hustle after that board. And that off, caused the foul. Off the scramble. That will put Jaeger on the bench with four. Stay with us. Cardinals lead it. And in Minot, you'll find Norwest people helping students learn about the world around them. In Thief River Falls, providing for those in need through the United Way. And in Valley City, bringing meals and a caring smile to the elderly. Making our community a better place to live. It's the most important work we do. Come to expect the best. It's a and Supplies Peanut Days. Stop in and browse. Eat peanuts and throw the shells on the floor. Just about everything is on sale. Lee Fashion Jeans, buy one pair, get the second pair half price. Lee, the brand that fits. Baldwin filters, 15% off everyday low prices with six of the most popular numbers at special low prices. Brusky Brooms, $11.99. Squeegees, $9.99. Just about everything is on sale during Peanut Days. But hurry, Peanut Days ends March 20th at a and Supply, Highway 10, Moorhead, Detroit Lakes, and Jamestown. The 1994 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, creating a higher standard.
standard in luxury, performance, and safety. Smart lease this beautiful automobile at Nearson's Cadillac in Detroit Lakes. Just $3.99 a month for 24 months, or a one-time payment of just $11,383. Find rich, soft leather, a 4.9-liter V8 engine, and dual airbags. Cadillac Sedan DeVille, only $3.99 a month. Plus, find over 500 new and used cars and trucks at Nearson's. Nearson's, the place with all the cars. 4.24 remaining in the third. Looking at those numbers, collectively, the two teams are just 3 of 11 from three-point land tonight. But well, I would imagine that Rossi is going to start casting a few here pretty soon. they got to get more shots up, definitely. Here's, here's uh, Staples in their zone. Peterson will cast it, and he won't fall for him. And Balkan is fouled. That's on Gorton. Gorton picks up his third, and we got a lot of basketball left. Staples getting in some foul trouble, no doubt. They're a very aggressive team, and so is Rossi. Rossi happened to beat him to the ball that time. Then inside the mat, and fouled again. This one's going to be on higher. He's going to shoot two, his second. So Matt will go to the line. He has not shot a free throw tonight. You know, as the stats showed us here when we came back, uh, Rossi is 10 less attempts from field goals. You've got to put the shots up. Like the guy said when he went fishing, are you catching anything? The other guy you got to put your line in. <laughs>
got great quickness, but he wasn't quite quick enough there. He went out, went for the fake a little bit. That pump fake is, is such a great fake. It's called a threat of a shot. Red Severson was the greatest at that. He always taught that threat of a shot. And it is a heck of a fake. Free throw again. Gorton, he'll can two. And Gorton is four of six at the line, five of seven at the line tonight. Peterson, Service, Balkan, the three. Peterson, a little too late. Loose ball to Gorton. To Beslin. And it comes off to Peterson. Wow, what hustle by the little guy. That's really hustle. He That's got the rebound down there. Then he comes back here and he's diving for the ball. What heart. Ten-point lead for the Cardinals. Minute 43 remaining in the third quarter. Beslin off to Trevor Peterson. Another but net. Passes up to three. Peterson. Ben's got a shot. He likes that reverse move, doesn't he? He leans in, right. He does an excellent job off it. Zerbis down the lane, forces the shot, and draws the foul. And who's this one on? That's going to be four on Peterson, and we're not in the fourth quarter yet. Staples has got some foul trouble, no doubt. You know, you go back to it, Trevor hit that three back here. I'll tell you, it changes the complex of the game. It, the three-point play is such a great addition to basketball. We used to have it, all you, had, you could do is pack it in around the, in, in the lane, but now you can make, make people come out and play. Service to the line, 16 fouls on the Cardinals this half. Gets his third point. 109 remaining in the third. And service hits two big ones. Carlsrud comes back in. Lisi on the floor for the Staples Cardinals. Service sits down. It's an 11 point lead. Here comes Eric Kelly. Off to Lisi. He walks just off the bench. He'll turn it over right away. They came up from behind Kelly and swatted it loose. And I'll tell you, Rossi is giving it all they've got. Carlsbrood or somebody's got to train some threes here. Balkan will try it. Too strong. Big board. Big bucket for Ben Amundsen. Nine-point game. Pretty good resilience shown by the Cardin or the uh, Tigers here in the third quarter. You bet. They're hanging in there, and of course that's what they have to do if they expect to win this game. Not try make it up all at once, just peck away at it. Leading by nine, Cardinals milking it down to the 22nd mark here in the third. Foul trouble is the story for both teams. It's a coach's chess game and quality shots. As we wind it down, Peterson against Carlsrud. Gets a pick. Inside, Gorton. Big play. Oh, big block, Amundsen. Higher is fouled from behind, but I think that's one the Tigers could give. Yeah, Ben Amundsen comes through with a great block on Gorton. Here's the pass, and a beautiful pass, by the way, and then Ben Amundsen comes from behind and, and fouls it, but now... <laughs> That's wow. hit all of it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Higher's going to go to the line. I was going to say, that one I think is a foul. Higher's hit two tonight. That was just before the half. Well, Dagan knew, knew that he wasn't going to let him put it up there and give him a freebie, so he just went up there after him. Higher, short, Amundsen. Oh, he threw it away. Peterson could have gotten a shot off. So at the end of three, the Cardinals, who have been 
been down this road many times before. And it's the first time adventure for the Rod State Tigers, and they're within striking distance. Stay with us. Our coverage continues on DAY. Quality, custom buildings, and satisfied customers. That's what Fultz Buildings are all about. We're very, very satisfied with Fultz Builders. I think Fultz puts, puts up a heck of a building as far as uh, dollars and cents. Whether your need is commercial, insulated shop, machine storage, or garage and RV storage, a Fultz building is best. Completely erected with warranty. Look at the models open seven days a week at Fultz Buildings, Highway 10 West, Detroit Lakes, serving Minnesota and the Dakotas. Good communication. In today's world, it means everything. With TelPage Extended Area Paging, you can expand your boundaries of communication. TelPage has the largest coverage area in northwestern and west central Minnesota. Travel throughout this wide area and stay in touch with your business and family. TelPage also offers voicemail, your own 800 number, quality Motorola pagers, and affordable rates along with incomparable service. Why limit your paging distance? Experience all the advantages of TelPage Extended Area Paging. Call 277-3011 or 1-800-927-2208. State Bank of Hawley and all our friends and neighbors proudly support our district basketball teams. Now with our new office location in South Moorhead, State Bank customers include neighbors from all over the region who enjoy our convenience and full service. Teamwork creates success on the basketball court and in the State Bank lobby. So when you're ready for a reliable financial team, come to State Bank of Hawley. Neighbors you can count on since 1892. In Hawley and next to Salon Pontiac on 30th Avenue in South Moorhead. Now's the time to get a great deal on that boat you've been dreaming about all winter. This is Todd Simmonson inviting you to check out some of our great preseason specials on Mercruiser powered Glastron boats. Like the Glastron SSV 175 SE with Mercruiser 135 and all roller trailer. A great ski boat for only $10,695. Team up with the best. Glastron, Mercruiser, and Simmonson Marine. Boating fun for everyone at Simmonson Marine. The shooting percentages warming up a little bit for the whole game, but this half, not very good in the third quarter for Staples. They're down now to 54%. 52% for Rosse. Staples has scored 15 points off Rosse turnovers tonight. Inside, Ben Amundsen. You have to commend him for the way he's playing with three fouls tonight. He draws the Tigers with an eight, and a higher can't hang on to a Peterson pass. Rosse is just one of seven from three-point land tonight. Staples three of seven. You gotta slow up with the ball when you come to the top of the key. You can't be going in there wide open. Oh, Carl Cruz! It's down to five. It was 16 a moment ago. Two great athletes coming through for Ross. They ban the inside, and then Carl's rid with an outside shot. Jaeger's got to get back on the floor for Staples. And that's going to count. Big play for Gorton. And that's the fourth personal foul on Ben Amundsen with 7.17 remaining in the ballgame. You can't sit him, can you? No, I don't think so, but I think they've got to switch. they got to switch who, who he's guarding. I don't think you can put him on Jaeger. He's just too quick. There he is. He makes Ooh. one quick move, and boom, he's up, and there's a foul. Wow. They're calling him tight. Eight-point lead. Amundsen for three. Answers. Pressure. The big boy can shoot, Ed. Off the move, he really can. He sets himself well. Peterson. Beslin. Gorton. Tight man-to-man -man for Rotze. Peterson slithers through the defense and makes it happen. He's got 14. Staples in the zone again. Balkan. Peterson. He knows where that three-point line is. <laughs> Carl's Root does too. It won't go. And Kelly clears it away for the Cardinals. Coming up on the six-minute mark at the seven-point Cardinal lead. Carl's
Cruz. Gutsy play. Peterson answers for three. Trevor Peterson with 17 tonight. And it's back to a 10-point advantage. Timeout, Rossi. Peterson's three for five from three-point land. And Jaeger is on the bench. And we'll be back. Set of basketball coverage on WDAY. Your local news to follow. It is a 10-point advantage for the Cardinals. And, Dana, we've been down this road with Lynn Peterson before. It's going to have to take an awfully good effort to see the Cardinals have their 10-point lead evaporate. And Lynn Peterson wants to maintain the 10-point advantage to the four-minute mark, then Blaine Yeager will be okay to come back into this game. Moon, he's been quiet tonight. Ben Amundsen in traffic. He fouls. Staples is playing a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Moon is open down on the baseline. He didn't go, but Ben Amundsen stuck with it. He stays with it, and up he goes. Three-pointer, as good as any of those long ones. And that is four fouls on Gorton. So Amundsen at the line, unofficially with 24 points tonight. Amundsen doing all he can as it's now down to seven. Peterson against Moon. 5.30 remaining. Beslin can't get it. Loose ball. Service. Service has got one fast break bucket and another one. It's down to five. 5.15 remaining. Off the timeout, four unanswered, five unanswered points by the Rot State Tigers. It's a game of running gaps. First, it was the Cardinals on a 6-0 run. Now it's Rotze on a 5-0 run. And another loose ball. Carlsrud, he's got to go to the iron. Short. Oh, you got to hand it to Rotze. They are fighting back like you can't believe. Service on the reach-in. Darren Carlsrud put up an underhand layup, and they're tough when you're running wide open. Just about have to take them over the top, and... Uh, it was too bad he just came up short with it. What a tremendous defensive effort in his part. Gorton with four fouls. Jaeger with four fouls. Ben Amundsen with four fouls. And a bunch of guys with three. Rossi is up in their level of defense like they did against Eulen Hitterdahl. At this point of the game, they're playing some tough defense in there. Eric Kelly. Scoring with the clock stop. Is there a stat in basketball for that? Can't get the second one. Six point lead. Service. Carlsrud. Ben, will he take it? He wants it. Yeah. Too strong. And it comes off to Eric Kelly. Trevor Peterson. We got a foul. That's on Moon. That was a good shot by Ben Amundsen. Yes, it They're was. They're not going to block it. Nope. He's too big. He's got four fouls. He can shoot the three. It's a six-point game. You hit it, and this place is going nuts. And you know he had the feeling because he was going to put it up. There was a guy on him, so he gave a little fake and went around him, and then he had a chance to get it again. That was a good shot by him. Carlsrud sits down. That's a big substitution. And that free throw is good by Trevor Peterson. His first free throw tonight, and that gives him 18 points. 4.25 remaining. Seven-point lead. Again, the back end of a one-and-one one is missed by the Cardinals. Trevor Peterson. Ben Amundsen. They let the contact go. Trevor Peterson all the way to the iron. Oh, what a big time play. Amundsen in the paint. Oh, behind his back to get in the paint, Ed. But it's 
the pace that favors the Cardinals. Seven point lead for Staples. Peterson serviced on the foul. And Peterson will go to the line again with a one and one. Lynn is saying play under control, play under control. So he's uh, he's begging over there. But Trevor made something happen. You can't knock the kid for that. That's a big play right there, that layup. He was off balance. And a big free throw for Trevor Peterson. Now with 19 points.
Eric Kelly back to the line, and he's four of four from the stripe tonight. Yeah, and Lee Peterson's just picked up his fourth foul, so they've got problems there also, Rossi does, and I don't know. Uh, foul, yes, but uh, you're giving them two points every time you do it. Uh, Staples just drops them in. 21 of 26 at the line tonight for the Cardinals. They add up, do they not? Great shooters, they are great shooters. Carlsruth, service. Peterson for three. He's got the muscle. Balkan's got the rebound as it comes out of bounds. It's going to stay with Rotze. 2.22 remaining, down by 11. They had cut it to five at one point, 50 to 45. Zerbis for three. Yes. Zerbis. His first three-pointer tonight. The last two buckets by Zerbis. Eight points, two minutes to go. They're not out of the woods. Besslin. Zerbis on the D. Trevor Peterson. Well, if Staples does advance on Friday night, we're going to see two excellent guards going head-to-head. -head. The name, Zach Witt from Morris and Trevor Peterson from Staples. If this score holds with a minute 50 remaining. Zerbis has got now four fouls. To the line goes Cy Besslin. Young Matt Amundsen, we'll hear more from him the next two years. Denny, what about Ben Amundsen? What kind of college potential does he have? He can play in this area. He can play in this area. He's, he's such a great shooter. For a big guy. You bet. He's a big kid. He's a great shooter. Here's the kid I'm going to put my money on that goes on uh, goes on the kid from uh, from Morris. They're going to put Jaeger on him. Amundsen. Oh, look at that. Nice touch inside. But we're not done yet. Maybe Staples isn't going to win this thing, huh? I'm not going to sell Grasse short. Well, they've just been absolutely incredible at the free throw line. Jaeger's back in the ball game, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Minute 27 remaining. 12-point lead. Check that. Staples 13 of 14 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. Sarate. It's been a heck of a run. They trail it. Stay with us. Fieldhouse. New center six to follow. Our coverage tonight. 72-64. Eight point lead for the Cardinals. They go back to the line. After hitting 13 of 14 at the line in the fourth. And Blaine Yeager, who has been in foul trouble and on the bench for most of the night. He hasn't even worked up a sweat, and yet he steps up there and hits nothing but the bottom of the net. Plays with such great confidence. May be a little too aggressive to pick up those fouls early in the ball game. And he is four for four at the line tonight. He's going to get a double figure to me. He hasn't been on the floor much tonight. And he gets a rebound, and he's tied up, and he'll go back to the line. He's a strong kid. He's really uh, put on the weights, and he's developed. Evidently, he's been working on the weights. He's an excellent rebounder. He was, uh, he was as a freshman, he was an excellent rebounder. Well, you have to say that Randy Balkan has done a fine job with this crew. They will finish the season 19 and 7. It's not exactly rock, like Rotse is a big metropolis. You know, well, it does, <laughs> this, well, this is a pretty doggone good outfit. I'll tell you what, uh, everybody from Rotse was here tonight. I think they uh, they called the police force from Dent to watch the town. <laughs>
Peterson will go to the line. If anything Rossi is going to say is they might say, Service, why didn't we have you start shooting him a little earlier? Because he's been draining them now. Only five three-pointers by the Tigers tonight. Service has got two of them. Carlsrud has got one. Peterson's got one. And Amundsen's got one. Do you need a great three-point shooter to get to the show, Coach? You do. You do nowadays. You bet you do. Trevor Peterson, who's been on fire tonight. He's got 23, well above his average. That one won't go. Lee Peterson, we're sitting at the one-minute mark, 76-67. Rotsay's got a cast. This is Zerbis. Balkan for three. Yes. Balkan. Boy, they don't give up, Ed. They no, they coming. don't. With a lot of character. And it's a six-point game, and with 48 seconds left, they missed the front end of a one-and-one, -and, -one, and who knows? If Staples could miss some free throws, but I'll It just you hasn't what. happened. Uh, Lynn doesn't coach them to miss them. No. I mean, they, they make them. Notice how all of his players really have that good follow-through. Watch the wrist of Peterson as he lets this free throw go. See that? You bet. Up high. In the gym. Yep. He's, he's been in the gym. That's where you get it. He's got the old ostrich neck at the end of his free throw. Or in the barn or uh, in the creamery or wherever there's a basket. And this one will be exactly like the last one. Look at that. And the same result. Peterson, two more free throws. Moon, Zerbis, NBA three. Not this time. Gorton clears it away. That's all for Big Ben Amundsen, but what a year and a career it has been. And tonight, the big guy under foul pressure came to play. Dana, this kid, uh, we may see him down the road. You know, and I don't know uh, what sport he may take up, football or basketball. Eddie's a great tight end, played for Sling and Sammy in Agassiz Valley. He's a nice target across the middle, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he certainly is. You won't have trouble finding him underneath linebackers. And if my stats are right, Ben Amundsen finished this the year, his senior year, with 1,623 points on his career. That's terrific. It's unbelievable. He, as you said the other night, he uh, passed up Dave Gold's record at uh, at Rossi, and you, you know what a great athlete Gold is. Gorton making one of two at the line, and here comes Peterson. Balkan will take the baseline. He'll be rejected. Gorton with a big play and a foul. Oh, they're going to jump it. So possession is going to go to the Cardinals. They haven't quit playing. No, Balkin they haven't. really went to the basket with that, and Gorton came after that rebound with a vengeance. Jaeger with a foul. He'll go to the line, should I say. Lee Peterson, scrappy little player, leaves his heart and guts right on the floor. You can say that again. What a great tournament he's had. He went through the subsection just leading this team. You could tell in the huddle when they had their huddles in there, he was talking up, and he was he's just a leader on this team. He had a great final against Eulen Hitterdahl, and now he comes back with a scrappy game again tonight. He'll be back. He's only a junior. Staples, only one field goal in the fourth quarter, but has scored 29 points this quarter. That was Blaine Jager's 1,000th point that he just put in, Ed. He's had a great run. He's a tournament player. By 11, the Cardinals. 22 seconds to go. Look at Jaeger. Good looking athlete. Heads up play. Peterson, he'll go to the line. Have we got a dandy on Friday night? And Randy Balkan, who is 
done an excellent job at Rossé with this crew. It's all part of March Madness and tournament time. There'll be disappointment, there'll be jubilation. But when they look back, they'll probably say, I wish I could go through it again. Isn't that the truth? And with those young kids that Randy's got sitting over there and the kids playing, they might be back. Well, if Mark Torgerson is watching this game, one thing he doesn't want to do on Friday night is put Staples at the free throw line. And Carl through. As we say, they won't quit. It's a 10-point lead and the foul. That's going to be on Balkan with three seconds left. And again, Jaeger, who has played very little tonight, He's got 10 points and he'll go back to the line. Coach, before we get out of here, how do you see the matchup between Morris and Staples? Witt against Peterson in the backcourt first. Well, it's going to be Witt against Peterson, Jaeger, and Kelly, basically, and Fesslin, because uh, they're going to try everything they can, and they'll probably uh, switch different people on him on to Witt to try and hold him down so he doesn't get the ball into Big Logie. But uh, I'll tell you what, they're going to have a terrible time trying to keep him from the ball. I would suspect that Lynn's going to come out in some kind of a zone to keep the ball from Logie. Jaeger leaves with his fifth foul and 12 points tonight. 85-73. Two seconds to go, and Carlsrud will go back to the line. This kid plays with a great deal of intensity. Yes, and, he does. And one thing about Lynn Peterson's team is that they always show up mentally ready. Yes, they do, no doubt. They pretty much breeze through their subsection over there. I don't want to belittle any, anybody or anything, but uh, you know, they come through that subsection with some warm up, so they're ready to play when they get yeah. in here. Carlsrud hits a couple of free throws, and. The last two ticks will send the Staples Cardinals to the championship game of the Section 6A tournament on Friday night. A 10-point decision here at the Cobber Fieldhouse. 85-75 is our final score. The Rotse Tigers finish the year at 19-7. Lynn Peterson's team goes to 22-4. A night where Ben Amundsen had to shine and despite foul trouble, he did just that. But it was some tremendous balanced scoring by Staples. Gorton and Trevor Peterson really showed up tonight. And also Eric Kelly came up with a big night in doubles. And unofficially, we've got Staples finishing at the free throw line tonight, 37 of 44. Let's go to Dana Mock. He's at courtside. There was Uncle and Cousins embracing each other over there, Ed. We'll talk to uh, Cousin Trevor first. You did this one without Blaine Yeager. You gotta feel pretty good about that. Yeah, well, Blaine's been getting in foul trouble some games, and we've been practicing how to, how to deal with it on the court. We've also been practicing how to do it without Blaine and I, so we're used to it. There's no leaders on the, if he's not on the court, I have to take control. Paul's got to take control. We can do it. Forget the score. What do you think about the performance of the Cardinals? You happy with it? Well, Offensively, obviously with 85 points, we played well, but defensively, we've struggled all year long. It's just, I don't know, it's not clicking for us right now, and we gave up 75 points. It's another good indication that we got to work on our defense, and hopefully we can stick it to Morris. You'll have to, you'll have to crank it up defensively. Yeah. Morris is awfully good. Yeah. Witt, Logie, yeah, they, they're they definitely explosive on offense, so we're going to have to do something to stop them, guys. How determined is this team? You've had nothing but heartache in the finals the last few years here. Yeah, well, we know last three years has been five points total, and this year we deserve it. We're going to go out to get it, and we're going to give it our shot. Good luck, Trevor. Thanks a lot. Now the dad, Lynn Peterson, congratulations. Thank you. Your thoughts on this basketball game, winning basically without Blaine Yeager. Well, that's true. I uh, Again, I think the kids kind of got taken out of the game from both sides, but, uh, you know, things were very pretty for us at the time, but, uh, you know, I think it was a pretty gutty performance with our kids, two seniors, a junior, and two freshmen on the floor, so, uh, you know, we did some good things, we did some bad things, but we're happy to come out of here with a win. The matchup with uh, Morris on Friday, it seems like you two teams have been on a collision course since probably last year at this time. Well, I think that's where everybody else had us pegged. I'm sure they're happy to be here. We're definitely happy to be here, but, uh, 
Uh, you know, we know that they're a great basketball team. They probably got the edge on us in several categories, but uh, we're going to show up. We gotta, I think we'll play do some things a little bit better than we did tonight, and we're going to have to, and we're going to have to stay out of some foul trouble, that's for sure. Thanks, Coach. Good luck, Fred. Thank you. Yep. All right, Dana Mock at courtside with Lynn Peterson and his son Trevor. 23 points from the free throw line. The last 23 points for Staples came from the line. 26 out of 30 in the fourth quarter came from the line. That tells a big story to Mark Torgerson and the Morris Tigers for Friday night. So Friday night, our final score here tonight, Staples 85-75 winners over the Rossi Tigers. Great run.